I think everyone is here that um, needs to be here to get started, so we're going to start just a little bit early. Early is better than later. So I'm Linda Lloyd, and I'm the presiding officer assigned by the board to conduct this portion of the Category 2 license renewal hearing for Mount Airy Number 1 LLC doing business as Mount Airy Casino. And before we begin, if we can please turn off or to vibrate our cell phones and all those things so we don't interrupt today's hearing. I call this hearing to order. The date is Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022. The time is 1021, and the location is the Paradise Township Municipal Building, located at the intersections of Route 191 and 940 in Cresco, Pennsylvania. This hearing is being recorded. Uh, audio and video is also being recorded by our court sonographer. We are not streaming today at this point because we just don't have the um, bandwidth to do that here, um, but the video will be uploaded to our website um, later if you want to go back and see it again. So the Pennsylvania Racehorse Development and Gaming Act requires at Section 1326 that an operator's license shall be subject to renewal by the board every five years. This license renewal public input hearing is convened by the board pursuant to the mandate found in Section 1205B1 of the Gaming Act, which requires the board to conduct a public input hearing for any license renewal application. This hearing was advertised on the board's website, announced by the board at prior board meetings, and advertised in local newspapers. We have uh, five of our board members present for the hearing today. To my immediate left is um, our chair, um, Denise Smiler, and going down the line is Commissioner Regan and Commissioner Mustio, and to my right is Commissioner Dermondy and Commissioner Manzo Diaz. Um, Sean Logan is no longer on the board, so that is why he is not here today, and um, Nadia Ralston is not here as well. So the hearing will begin with a presentation by Mount Airy Casino, uh, with any cross-examination of witnesses by the Board's Office of Enforcement Counsel and any questions from board members if they should have any. The Office of Enforcement Counsel will then make a presentation, again, with cross-examination of witnesses if um, counsel for Mount Airy desires and any questions from the board. After the close of those presentations, um, evidence from the parties, the individuals who have registered to speak today at today's hearing during the public comment period will be heard as their name is called and each speaker will have five minutes to provide their thoughts on the renewal application. For following the close of the public comment period, the parties will have the opportunity to provide a short closing statement if they desire. If all witnesses could speak uh, loudly and clearly into the microphone, if you can, so our court reporter um, can hear you and your audio is picked up for our um, recording, video recording. So let's begin by having all the witnesses for Mount Airy Casino and the Office of Enforcement Council who will testify today. If you could please stand and raise your right hand to be sworn by our court reporter. So the first time you speak, if you could state and spell your name for the court reporter, and um, so she has that spelling, and Mount Airy, and begin. Good morning, Director Lloyd, Madam Chair, honorable members of the board, may it please the board, Nick Rodriguez Cairo, on behalf of Mount Airy Casino Resort. Today, first of all, let me thank you for having us here before you today to, for this public hearing. Uh, by the time we're done with this presentation, it's my sincere hope that this board will see that Mount Airy is not only suitable for the renewal, but that Mount Airy is a major economic driver in this region, an employer, and a good citizen. For the presentation today, I'm going to have Mr. Todd Greenberg, the Interim General Manager and COO, as a witness, Mr. Hassan Mon Emma the VP of Resort Operations as a witness. Stacy Hoover, who is our Chief Financial Officer, will also be testifying. And we will also have testimony from two of our longtime employees. 
Of course, you'll get a chance to question and follow up as you wish and desire. If there's anything in our presentation that you require additional information, please let me know, and I will certainly follow that up in writing with the board. Without further ado, let me present Mr. Greenberg. Hello. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is usually pretty loud. They try to keep mics away from me. But uh, my name is uh, Todd Greenberg, T-O-D-D-G-R-E-E-N-B-E-R-G. -E -E uh, welcome, uh, everybody. Uh, thank you, uh, director, chair, and commissioners. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, being here. Uh, welcome to our uh, license renewal public input hearing. For some reason, I haven't been able to memorize those five words, so I had to look at the cover. Uh, I will be uh, presenting uh, along with uh, Hassan, who's our VP of Resorts, and also Stacy, our CFO. Uh, I'll be starting the uh, presentation. And uh, we just let's uh, let's start from uh, from the beginning. This is kind of like showing someone baby pictures. Uh, this is the history of uh, Mount Airy. Uh, in 2004, uh, they purchased the Mount Airy Lodge and the uh, surrounding land, uh, almost a uh, thousand acres. Uh, unfortunately, it turns out this beautiful uh, historic building, uh, due to uh, uh, building issues needed to be taken down and we needed to build a new property uh, and we did that and uh, built a luxury property we got our uh, final category 2 license in 2007 you know just looking at this uh, heart-shaped tub uh, you know I, I grew up in Long Island and uh, you know, when I was a kid watching uh, the Honeymooners in Bonanza, this commercial would come on all the time. I, I watched it in black and white, so I didn't even know how red this was. Uh, but it, it really resonated, and, you know, the Poconos really was this famous honeymoon capital. And uh, one of the things that uh, we, uh, we love uh, and have a lot of fun with this a lot of people who actually stayed here for their weddings have started coming back for their 50th anniversaries and uh, we love it when uh, we get to host these people and the fact that they still consider it so special uh, construction and opening uh, opened the property in 2007 um, you know I know sometimes these properties open just as uh, kind of uh, what you might call a slot parlor or slot room, but that was never the case here. Uh, there were always restaurants, retail, golf, and uh, 188 hotel rooms. Uh, as soon as uh, table games was permitted, uh, we immediately added that to our casino. Uh, taking a look at our, our location, uh, one of the great things about uh, the location is that uh, we're able to attract people from uh, North uh, New Jersey and parts of New York. Uh, so we're, uh, we're happy to be able to bring in some tax dollars from our neighbors. Uh, the overview for, for today, we're a, uh, we're a complete casino. We've got uh, slots, we've got tables, we've got sports books. Uh, the the lottery I, I think everybody here missed the billion dollars I think the winner was in another state uh, the resort we've got uh, multiple restaurants so whether you just want a quick pizza or some comfort food of a cheeseburger or you want something more gourmet we provide that uh, we have a luxurious spa fitness center uh, a great indoor outdoor pool a 18-hole uh, professional golf course, uh, indoor event space, a pavilion, almost uh, 300 hotel rooms. Uh, looking over at the specifics of the uh, gaming floor, uh, 16, over 1,600 slots, 83 table games, uh, a new sports book and poker room, uh, and uh, online gaming. Uh, as soon as uh, this was permitted, we partnered with the uh, STARS Group in 2019, uh, paid $20 million for the, uh, the two separate licenses, 
And uh, now this uh, partnership uh, has been producing over an additional $25 million per year in taxes for the state. Uh, our total capital investment in the property is over $500 million. Uh, here you see this uh, great shot of uh, our indoor pool. Uh, you know, one of the nice things is you can just imagine it's December, there's snow on the ground, and you're inside overlooking the snow, getting ready to post on Facebook or Instagram your, your, uh, your great picture in here. If you swim all the way to the back, there's actually an opening and uh, you can swim out to the outdoor pool. Uh, this is something uh, we're, we're very proud of. Uh, and then you see the, uh, the convention space, which was actually uh, fairly recent from 2009, actually rated five diamond by AAA. Uh, we got a custom chandelier there that was made to uh, match the uh, natural vistas out, right outside the window. Uh, we've uh, recently, in the last five years, spent over $60 million in uh, improving and upkeeping the property. Uh, some of the uh, recent uh, investments in 2019, we had a $44 million expansion. This was uh, all uh, non-gaming. Uh, so just hotel and resort amenities. Uh, we added 96 four diamond luxury rooms. Here you can see a, uh, a great picture of uh, one of the suites. Uh, 16,000 square feet of this five diamond uh, event space uh, where uh, you know, we, can, we can host everything from uh, uh, trade shows, the nicest wedding, uh, and uh, concerts. And uh, also uh, very proud to say that this added, depending on the season, 40 to 50 additional jobs to the local community. Uh, some of our other recent capital investments, uh, we, uh, we built out a room for sports wagering. While we did it, we said, hey, we might as well uh, add poker into it. Uh, so we also built that. It's a, it's a great looking room, great place to uh, come see the game. Uh, other uh, improvements, even though uh, we are very highly rated on the uh, four diamond scale, we spent another two and a half million dollars upgrading the rooms, uh, another five million dollars on slot machine and table games upgrades, and uh, ten million dollars in uh, additional capital expenditures. And, uh, you know, we don't think this will ever end. Uh, you know, the owners are extremely proud of the property and all of us who work here are proud of it. Uh, you know, I, I kind of uh, uh, grew up in, in Las Vegas gaming. And uh, when I have uh, families and friends come here, I'm actually very proud for them to step onto the property. So, you know, I can kind of have someone who's used to going to Wynn or Bellagio and, uh, you know, I don't know what they think they're going to step in, but normally the first words out of their mouth is, wow. And uh, I'm very proud of, uh, proud of that. And uh, we'll continue to uh, invest in, uh, in keeping the property up and also uh, continuing to improve the uh, operations. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn you over to Hassan, our VP of Resort Operations. Thank you very much, Todd. <coughs> Madam Chairwoman, Director and Commissioners, good morning. Uh, Hassan Abdelmunem is my name, H-A-S-S-A-N-A-B-D-E-L hyphen M-O-N-E-I-M. I have recently joined uh, Mount Airy Casino as their Vice President of Resort Operations. This magnificent property has, as stated, been awarded a four diamond status. Our commitment to service and cleanliness is our top priority and is strived for on a continual basis. This is the first casino resort in Pennsylvania to receive the AAA Four Diamond rating. Mount Airy has been awarded this designation since 2010 for 11 consecutive years. And this award is presented to less than 6% of all hotels in the US. With the pandemic in 2021, cleaning standards were enhanced and AAA instituted tougher standards to ensure the safety of the guests at the property. 
we passed the clin clinical inspection process and achieved the inspected clean designation. This next slide is a picture of one of our new rooms and shows the level of quality and luxury in the natural stone, large 55 inch TVs, and the beautiful decor. Our dining encompasses a full range of tastes and styles from Bisteca, our fine dining steakhouse, to Guy's, which provides your comfort food. We also have a pizzeria, our signature buffet, in addition to our Asian offering, the Lucky 8 restaurant, which provides sushi and noodles made to order, and Starbucks coffee shop for a quick snack and beverage. The pool, as Todd mentioned, is another great amenity for the property, allowing guests to take advantage of a relaxing swim, even in the wintertime. The indoor-outdoor feature is an added delight, and the pool features a bar and restaurant, providing a full-service experience. <coughs> Our championship golf course features beauty and challenge for all golfers, and offers some stunning vistas of the property and the lake. The new event center is graded at a five-diamond level, and offers configurable meeting space to host catered functions of up to 900, and 2500 for concert entertainment. Featuring state-of-the-art electronics and AV capabilities, few have to offer. In addition to service and cleanliness, our third, commi our third commitment is to safety. The COVID pandemic tested all in 2020 and 2021 and put additional hardships on our staff. Our team members were provided benefits at no cost during the first COVID closure plus three weeks pay and their tip stipends during that uncertain time. During the second closure, all team members were paid in full and were again paid a gratuity stipend for the tip positions. The property spent over 200,000 in PP&E and COVID mitigation efforts to ensure the safety of the team members and the guests of the resort. And in property safety, Mount Airy has invested in a roving unit that patrols the property 24-7 daily to ensure public safety and has invested in external communication and signage to ensure that safety. Internally, our safety committee meets monthly and is made up from employees from all departments who meet to discuss areas of concern. Those areas are identified and addressed in each meeting. A further commitment is the prevention of underage gaming on the property. We have established permanent stations at each entrance to identify and prevent underage gaming and have posted signage to raise awareness of the law. Our commitment to excellence at Mount Airy Casino has resulted in some industry recognition. In 2019, a casino publication ranked us as the best of Pennsylvania in eight categories, including gaming, hotel, pool, spa, and golf course. And more recently, TripAdvisor ranked us number one as best value resort in the Poconos for 2021. Mount Airy has also provided quality live entertainment in the area through the years. And this year, we bring you Cool and the Gang, the band War, comedian Tracy Morgan, and the Little River Band. Thank, Thank you, you. Uh, so much. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, if anybody, you know, Cole and the gang, a celebration and uh, war. I like why can't we be friends, but I think they're known more for low rider. Uh, and now that I uh, did that little segue, I'd like to welcome uh, Stacy Hoover, our CFO. A little chair flip there. Hi, I'm Stacy Hoover, um, S T A C Y H O O V E R, and I am the Chief Financial Officer for Mount Airy. And uh, thank you all for being here today. Um, since opening in October 2007 through 2021, Mount Airy has paid $1.4 billion in gaming taxes and fees. We've paid $9.8 million in state payroll taxes and $35 million to Monroe County in property and school taxes. We are the largest taxpayer in Monroe County and have been for 15 years. Throughout the building of our property, expansion, and operations, we have purchased 483 million in goods and services. Almost half of our spend has been with Pennsylvania businesses and 47 million with minority and or women owned businesses. Last year, we completed a comprehensive refinancing of our debt 
with one of our previous debt holders, and we are in compliance with all of our debt covenants. As I mentioned, as part of our commitment to Pennsylvania and our local area, Mount Airy has paid $1.4 billion in taxes and fees from our gaming operations. This includes over $180 million in local share and over $105 million in economic and tourism tax. We are also committed to helping our community by supporting local organizations and giving back to our neighbors. These are just a couple of examples, including Breakfast with Santa benefiting the United Way, buying holiday groceries at one of our local grocery stores for some of our neighbors, supporting the Hughes Cancer Center and the recent Kickstands Up for Kids. At Mount Airy, we have an awesome dedicated team that works together to provide great experiences for our guests. At year end, we had around 800 team members, of which 81% are full-time. We are also a diverse team, and 40% of our staff and 36% of our management are minority. 42% of us are women, including 25% of our executive team, and 37% of our management team. 95% of us live in Pennsylvania, with 92% living in Monroe and the surrounding counties. We offer competitive wages and benefits to our team and have paid almost $450 million in wages and benefits. We have a comprehensive benefits package for our full-time team members, including medical, dental, vision, and paid time off. We also provide 401k with employer match, a free meal with each shift, and life insurance for all employees. We offer many opportunities for our team to grow in their careers with more than 50 internal promotions to management or higher management in the last two years. 35 of the 50 promotions were to minority and or women team members. We also provide employee assistance programs, offer a free dealer school, company paid uniforms and, dealer and license fees, and have many bonus incentive recognition and retention plans. Mount Airy supports local organizations, donating over 1.6 million to over 100 local organizations since 2007. We also oversee the Mount Airy Foundation where we donate 5% of our net income, which is used to contribute to 501c3 organizations like the United Way, Women's Resources of Monroe County, and the Pocono Mountains Community Fundraiser. Now I'd like to introduce you to two of our team members who would like to tell you a little bit about their time with Mount Airy. This is Shante Vallejo and Mark Kulik, and Shante is going to be up first. Hi, Shante. Hi, how are you? Good. You're going to help them with the uh, spelling of your name? Absolutely. Good morning. My name is Shante Vallejo, S H O N. T-A-E-V-A-L-L-E-J-O. I've been part of the Mount Airy family since 2007. Prior to working at Mount Airy Casino, I commuted back and forth to New Jersey to a small company who didn't offer advancement opportunities option. What attracted me to Mount Airy Casino is opportunities, advancement, options. I started as a cage cashier, and within three months, I was promoted to a supervisor. Within six months, I was promoted to a, C a shift manager, and then as I gained experience and tenure, I was promoted to a senior shift manager, and now to my current role as a cage manager. I must say, I am fortunate to have leaders throughout my career who identify and develop my talent and continue to push me to the next level. I truly thank the DeNapos family for giving me the opportunity to work at Maui Casino. Thank you so much, uh, Shante. And we're going to bring up uh, Mark now. But, you know, I'd also like to say, please, you okay. can, uh, is, is I'd like to say, you know, these team members are so much more important than those of us who have been up here. And, uh, you know, I'm truly humbled by how great they make uh, make the property more so than the bricks and mortars. These are the people who make it special and make us so proud to be part of Mount Airy. And with that, I'm, I'm, uh, that's a lot to yes, hold on your is. shoulders, Mark. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Mark Kulik, M-A-R-K-K-U-L-I-C-K. -K -K. I started at Mount Airy in August of 2007. In two weeks, I'll be starting my 16th year here. I began my career in the warehouse, 
then became involved in inventory control, and for the last few years, I've worked my way up. I am now the food and beverage buyer for the casino. Through my years here at the casino, I've received some excellent pay and benefits. They've enabled me to raise a family, build a house, put my children through college, and taking advantage of the 401k at Mount Airy, prepare for my future. One of the really neat benefits, I think, at Mount Airy is the uh, fact of our internal job postings. They're available online for all employees to see at any time. They're constantly updated. And if someone's looking to advance or find their niche in the casino, they, they can look at that, see what's open, and they can also then go, and this is really nice part, go and talk to people that work in that department and then see what it's about and see if it still interests them. If so, they can pursue it. If not, they can wait for the next opening. And that's a really nice feature. A couple other things, the family atmosphere I've encountered through my years here. Uh, I've made a lot of friends professionally and personally that I'm sure after I retire will still be my friends. And in closing, I want to t thank the DeNaples family for providing us with a safe, clean work environment. And I can truly say Mount Airy is a place where I enjoy getting up and going to work daily. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. Director, that concludes our PowerPoint. Of course, we'll prefer any questions. Uh, well, first, let's would like to move it into the record. Absolutely. Okay, we'll mark it as Mount Airy exhibit, hearing exhibit number one. Any objection from Enforcement Council? No objection. Okay, so moved, and we'll turn to Enforcement Council for any questions. Uh, Thomas Monan, M-O-N-A-G-H-A-N with the Office of Enforcement Council. Uh, are there any any plans at this time to make any changes to the size and layout or layout of the gaming floor? Uh, there's, uh, you know, besides maybe, you know, readjusting slot machines or minor things, which of course we'll always get approval for, there are no major adjustments planned. And uh, has the smoking versus non-smoking uh, percentages of the gaming floor changed since uh, last renewal of Mount Airy? Uh, they are still 50-50. Turn to slide 13, I believe it's 13. Uh, can you expand on the uh, $5 million in slot machine and table games upgrade, what that entailed? Yeah, uh, you know, the, the majority of that is going to be uh, new, uh, new slot machines. And in addition, uh, we've also bought shufflers and some electronic signage for uh, the table games. On slide uh, 28, the uh, state and municipality taxes. You mentioned that those numbers are uh, from opening. Uh, do you know the figures uh, since the license was last renewed? Uh, I think that's probably a, a number we're going to have to. Stacy, do you have it, or is that I, something we need I to get back to you on? Total. Um, oh, um, the oh, last okay. five years, you want to start with year 2016? Yes, yes, 2016. So 2016 was 89 million 500,000. 2017 was 93 million 700,000. 2018 was 92 million, 93 million. Uh, 2019 was 91 million. 2020, we were shut down, so 68 million. Uh, 2021 was 80, 89.790 million. Thank you. Um, on slide uh, 35, uh, what what benefits, if any, are part-time employees entitled to or eligible for? Yeah, the uh, part-time employees go one back, please. Are uh, the one I had there? Yeah, okay. the uh, part-time employees are uh, eligible for the 401k match, the free employee meals, and the free basic life for all team members. And uh, do you know what percentage of your employees are ramp trained? Um, I of the total I don't know but I do know that everybody who's working uh, somewhere where there's uh, alcohol provided is 100% trained and uh, we used to give them like a 30-day grace period and we stopped that uh, a year or two ago and now make them actually be trained before they can actually step on the floor and uh 
How often do employees receive training in compulsive and problem gambling? Uh, once a year. Thank you. That's, uh, that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Any questions? None. From council? Okay. I will turn to board members now. Um, we'll start with Commissioner Mustio, Commissioner Regan. Just wondering if Mr. Greenberg could sing more cool in the gang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, what are the other words besides celebrate? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Chair Smiler. I, I do have a few questions. Um, I, you offer a lot of great benefits. Do you have any kind of tuition reimbursement program? Uh, we don't currently. Uh, we are working on a um, scholarship program with um, a couple local colleges. And on your economic impact through 2021, the Mount Airy vendor spend, it's $47 million to minority and women-owned businesses, which is a little less than 10%. Are you doing anything to try to increase that number? Yeah, we, we are, and uh, we're having some, uh, we're forming a diversity committee that's going to include purchasing. Uh, <laughs> y you know, sometimes uh, some of the bigger things like slot machines and even uh, Cisco and U.S. Foods are, are kind of dominated by, you know these companies but we are going to uh, try much harder to uh, not only uh, purchase more from these businesses but we're also working in areas like food to purchase more from uh, local businesses too and uh, just a point of clarification on your diversity and, and the workforce um, which is pretty impressive the numbers but is are the women the 42 percent women is that part and parcel of the total 40 percent diverse numbers or is that separate no no that's uh, that's separate from uh, from that now some of them might also be women but 40 percent of the total population is minority team members and then 42 percent are women now obviously there might be a woman who's some overlap yeah okay that's what I was trying to yeah, yeah. figure out okay right and I won't ask you to sing any more of the cool in the game. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really like much better on the war catalog. But I, I appreciate that, Chair. As well, turn to Commissioner Dermody. No question. And Commissioner Manzo Diaz. Thank you. Um, with regard to the economic impact that we were just talking about, the 47 million to minority and women-owned businesses, um, do you have a breakdown of uh, the in terms of the category of minorities? So when you say minorities, is there a breakdown African American, Latino, Asian? Do you have a breakdown of that? Uh, I do not. I'm sorry. You I don't. Get that for you. Okay. And also with regard to the diverse workforce, where you have minority team members, do you have a breakdown of how many Latinos, Asians, African Americans that you have? And also in terms of the women, do you have a breakdown in terms of how many are minority and a breakdown of that? Yeah, I believe we, we do. I don't know if we have it quite at our fingertips, but we could certainly provide it. One of the things that you might find interesting, though, that uh, we're very proud of, of the last 50 uh, promotions uh, at the property, 52% uh, or 26 of them were to uh, minority team members. Uh, 11 of those were African American, uh, 10, 10 or 11, and I say 10 or 11 because we have that two or more category, yeah, yeah. Uh, were Hispanic, and then uh, I think we have a Native American and, you know, a couple of other people in there. But so that's the breakdown, and we're, you know, we're very proud of that fact. I appreciate the fact that you have those kinds of numbers, so thank you very much. Thank and you. I, and I look forward to getting that information. Thank Great. You. And council, if you just email that to the board clerk email address, we'll make sure it gets to the board members. Just additional information they're requesting. Yes. We'll do. It. Thank you. And we'll get that in the record. And council, do you have any follow-up questions for your witnesses after these? Okay. Uh, then we will turn to our Office of Enforcement Council um, for your presentation and again remember to state and spell your name for the record before you speak for your witnesses thank you, <clears throat> thank you. thomas monan 
uh, M-O-N-A-G-H-A-N, once again with the Office of Enforcement Council. The Office of Enforcement Council and Mount Airy Casino Resort have entered in the following stipulations concerning Mount Airy Casino and Resort's application for renewal of its license, which have been provided to you as Exhibits 1 through 8. OEC Exhibit number 1 is the arrest statistics from, for Mount Airy from 2016 to 2022, compiled by the Pennsylvania State Police Borough of Gaming Enforcement. OEC Exhibit number 2 is a letter from the Borough of uh, Liquor Control Enforcement. OEC Exhibit number 3 is a memorandum from the Board's Office of Compulsive and Problem Gambling. OEC Exhibit number 4 is a letter from the Pennsylvania Department of Revenue to, uh, Bureau of Compliance. OEC exhi Exhibits 5, 6, and 7 are consent agreements, compliance conference memorandums, and warning letters, respectively, which are not before you today but are accessible through an access link provided to the parties and board members. OEC Exhibit number 5 is nine board-approved consent agreements entered into between OEC and Mount Airy since Mount Airy's re last renewal. OEC Exhibit number 6 is compliance conference memorandums from six compliance conferences with Mount Airy since the time of his last renewal. And OEC would ask that OEC Exhibit number 6 be kept confidential. OEC Exhibit number 7 is 47 warning letters issued to Mount Airy since the time of its last renewal. And Mount Airy has appropriately responded to each warning letter issued by the OEC. OEC would ask that OEC Exhibit number 7 be kept confidential. Finally, OEC Exhibit number 8 is the stipulations agreement executed by the parties on July 27, 2022. OEC requests that Exhibits 1 through 8 be admitted to the record with the additional request that uh, Exhibits 6 and 7 be kept confidential. And um, Attorney Rodriguez Cairo, any objections to these? Director, I, I have no objections. I would ask that uh, OEC Exhibits 5, 6, and seven be kept confidential versus just six and seven because some of the proprietary language that may be contained in the consent agreements. Um, well, I will have to inform you the consent agreements are already okay. out okay. there. That's fine. Then. <laughs> we, we don't keep those confidential. So That's fine then, ma'am. Okay. So we will enter no those pleasure. in the record with number six and seven as um, being kept confidential. Yeah, and uh, OEC intends to offer the testimony of uh, three witnesses with the Pennsylvania State Police the Board's Bureau of Casino Compliance, and the Board's Bureau of Investigations and Enforcement. At this time, I'd like to call OEC's first witness. OEC's first witness is Corporal Thomas Keegan with the Pennsylvania State Police. Good morning. Corporal, were you sworn Sorry. with the rest of the group? Yes. Okay. Corporal, can you uh, please state and spell your name for the record? Corporal Thomas Keegan, T-H-O-M-A-S-K-E-E-G-A-N. And uh, who is your current employer and job title? It's the Pennsylvania State Police, and I'm currently a corporal with the Pennsylvania State Police, assigned to Mount Airy Gaming Office. And uh, can you please uh, describe your career with the Pennsylvania State Police? Uh, I approximately have 12 years. Um, throughout those 12 years, I started as a patrol trooper, then into a crime position, crime unit trooper. I uh, then got into the Bureau of Gaming Enforcement, Mount Airy Casino office as a trooper, got promoted to corporal, uh, became a patrol corporal, and then uh, finally a supervisor corporal within the Bureau of Gaming Enforcement, Mount Airy office. And uh, what are your job duties in your current position? Uh, current position is to manage and supervise the day-to-day -day duties of uh, Bureau Gaming Enforcement Office at Mount Airy Casino. And uh, what is the role of the Pennsylvania State Police at Mount Airy Casino? Uh, the State Police provides uh, professional policing services to this jurisdiction, which is the casino and its grounds. Um, we enforce uh, crime. Uh, could be anything from Title 18 which is the crime code, uh, Title 75, which is the traffic code, and Title 4, which is the gaming code. And uh, can you describe the Pennsylvania State Police's jurisdiction at Mount, Mount Airy Casino? Uh, the Bureau of Gaming Enforcement Office, is primary duty is the gaming floor and any immediate area uh, associated to um, gaming in itself. Uh, we also cover um, anything in the surrounding areas. Uh, we we have Pennsylvania State Police Stroudsburg Station, 
whose immediate coverage area is Paradise Township. So they are responsible for um, parking lots or any immediate areas outside of the building. But the gaming enforcement does uh, tend to cover incidents off the gaming floor also. We try to assist uh, Stroudsburg as well. So just to confirm, uh, Pennsylvania State Police Stroudsburg Barris has the primary jurisdiction over the parking lot. Yes. And uh, can you describe the working relationship between uh, Pennsylvania State Police and local law enforcement, if there is uh, any? We do associate with some local law enforcement uh, on occasions. Uh, it would be Pocono Township, Pocono Mountain Regional Police Department. Uh, they have assisted us in the past. Um, it's professional, respectful, and cooperative. And uh, can you describe the working relationship between the Pennsylvania State Police and Mount Airy employees? Again, it's professional. Uh, it's cooperative, uh, respectful um, on both ends. And uh, can you describe the working relationship the, between the Pennsylvania State Police and the board's Bureau of Com Casino Compliance? Again, it's professional and respectful. We, uh, we assist each other a lot with different type of investigations, and um, we're useful to each other. And uh, are you familiar with how arrest statistics are reported by the Pennsylvania State Police? Yes, I am. And can you please describe how those arrest st statistics are reported? Well, as uh, incidents are handled by members of the State Police, um, we do we complete reports, and as a supervisor, we, we um, review those reports and approve them. Um, these reports then are documented for arrest statistics, as you said, from 2016 to... December of 2020, all arrest incidents were manually uploaded to the UCR Uniform Crime Report site, and they'd be updated monthly with the prior month's arrests. And uh, how has that process changed since uh, Mount Airy was last, license was last renewed in 2016? Our department has converted over to the NIBR system. Uh, which is the incident-based uh, reporting system um, because our reports have now become computer-based. So now all our reports and arrest logs and information are automatically uploaded into the NIBR system. So we no longer manually enter UCR arrests. And when did that uh, transition take place? Uh, take that effect? occurred January 1st of 2021. And uh, how frequently is information in these reports updated? Um, monthly. I'm going to uh, direct you to what has been provided as OEC Exhibit Number One. Uh, are you familiar with this document? Yes. And uh, what is this document? This is the SR UCR report for 2016. Well, from April 1st, 2016, to the end date of December 31st, 2016. What is the full report, uh, cont the full exhibit of container? Okay, the uh, SR reports for 2016, 17, 18, 19, and 20, and then the 2021 is a report for our Senate report, which is how we log the arrests for 2021 because we cannot generate um, a NIBRS report as of right now because our department is transitioning over to that NIBR system. And then 2022 is just uh, an Excel spreadsheet of incidents that we have tallied up until July. And um, because the, the um, center report has not been completed yet for 2022, which shows as of this date, there's the arrest total as of July 7th. And uh, have you reviewed the arrest statistics for Mount Air Casino from 2016 through 20, 2022? Yes. And uh, what is the most common criminal offense at Mount Air based on the information provided in this exhibit? The most common offense we see are um, fake IDs, and it falls under forgery and counterfeiting, which would be the, the exact code. And uh, in your opinion, are there a significant number of violent crimes at Mount Air Casino? No. In your uh, opinion, are there a significant number of crimes regarding individuals under the age of 21? No, other than just our most um, common uh, arrest would be a fake ID. And uh, has there been any noticeable increase in any specific crimes between 2016 and the present? No. 
And uh, generally, is the Pennsylvania State Police satisfied with the level of cooperation between Mount Airy Casino personnel and the troopers stationed at the casino? Yes. Thank you. I have no further questions. Any cross-examination from Mount Airy Council? No, Director. Thank you, though. Okay. You're excused. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. I forgot to ask if our board members had any questions for you. Anyone? <coughs> Commissioner Regan, smile. No. no Can you do like my cousin Vinny? We got no more use for this witness. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we do. <laughs> uh, OEC's next witness is uh, Patricia G Gustafson with the Borough of Casino Compliance. Can you uh, <clears throat> please state and spell your name for the record? My name's Patricia Gustafson, P-A-T-R-I-C-I-A-G-U-S-T-A-V-S-O-N. And uh, who is your current employer? Pennsylvania Gaming Control Board. And uh, what is your current position with them? I am the Northeast Regional Casino Senior Casino Compliance Supervisor. And uh, does the Northeastern Region include uh, Mount Airy Casino Resort? Yes, it does. And uh, can you uh, briefly describe your employment history with the board? Uh, I have been employed with the board for 16 and a half years now. Um, I started in December 2006 as a compliance examiner in the Bureau of uh, Corporate Compliance and Internal Controls, which no longer exists. Um, in October 2007, I was promoted to a provision position of compliance manager in the Bureau of Gaming Operations. In March of 2019, I was promoted again as the position that I'm in now, the senior Northeast Regional Senior Supervisor of Casino Compliance. And uh, <clears throat> what are your job duties as the uh, senior supervisor in the uh, Bureau of Casino Compliance? I oversee the site casino compliance supervisor and the casino compliance representatives um, and the Bureau of C Casino Compliance at Mount Airy. And can you uh, describe the role of the Bureau of Casino Compliance at a slot machine license, uh, licensee such as Mount Airy? Um, the Bureau of Casino Compliance observes and reports on um, incidents and um, items of importance to the board. Um, we oversee table game drop and we report on that and any incidents that might occur during the, um, the shift of the casino compliance representative. And uh, how has the role of the Bureau of Casino Compliance changed since Mount Airy's license was last renewed by the board? Uh, Mount Airy's added retail sports wagering to their offering, so that's a new observation. Um, so the Bureau of Casino Compliance observes this new area of gaming, which includes placement of sports wagering. And uh, can you describe the level of uh, scope and of access which the Bureau of Casino Compliance has at Mount Airy Casino? Um, the Bureau of Casino Compliance has unfettered access to all restricted areas, which includes surveillance, cage operations, um, the monitoring room, the count room, um, in case of an emergency happens, we request access to the central control computer system room, um, and that's granted by the Department of Revenue. Uh, turning to that uh, central control computer room, uh, has there any been any connectivity issues between the uh, central computer system and Mount Airy Casino? No, there has not. Can you uh, describe the Bureau of Casino Compliance interactions with the, with the Department of Revenue? Uh, on a regular basis, C Bureau of Casino Compliance receives notification emails from the Department of Revenue. These notifications are sent to the Casino Compliance staff when a slot machine is not responding. The com Casino Compliance staff investigate the reason behind the communication breakdown and forwards the information to the Casino Compliance, or the, I'm sorry, the Department of Revenue uh, operator of the uh, central control computer system. Uh, the casino compliance staff ensure the slot machines that is not communicating is placed out of service and to, until communications can be restored. 
In addition, the casino compliance staff report meters to the Department of Revenue run a RAM clear as necessary on a slot machine. Can you uh, discuss the uh, relationship between the Borough Casino Compliance and the on-site Pennsylvania State Police at Mount Airy Casino? As the corporal alluded to, we have a wonderful, great relationship with the St Pennsylvania State Police. We corroborate on a daily basis. Um, they're very helpful with us doing our reports when something happens. Um, they are really good at uh, requesting information from us if need be. It is a wonderful working relationship. Can you uh, please explain the ways in which the Borough Casino Compliance interacts with patrons of Mount Airy Casino? Um, the Bureau of Casino Compliance interacts with patrons dealing with customer complaints. Um, if they're on the floor at the time and a patron asks where a certain amenity might be, they'll help them actually locate it, um, answer any questions they might have of a promotion if that comes up. Um, so they're, they're very helpful with uh, interactions with the casino uh, patrons. Can you describe the relationship between the Bureau of Casino Compliance and Mount Airy employees? Um, we have daily interactions and open communications with the Mount Airy Casino employees. Um, they're very cooperative. Um, routine meetings are held with the, the casino compliance supervisor and Mount Airy staff. Uh, it's a very good working relationship. As the uh, casino compliance senior supervisor assigned to Mount Airy Casino, are you familiar with the regulatory issues which occur at the casino? <laughs> yes, I am. And uh, in your experience, what are the most common regulatory issues at Mount Airy Casino? Uh, false identification, underage, and self-exclusion violations. Thank you. I have no further questions. Any cross-examination? No cross Any questions from our board members? When you described your interaction with patrons, mm -hmm. you did not talk about patrons that wanted to be either self-excluded or that were excluded. Do patrons still, even though I know it's online now, the self-exclusion, do patrons ever come to the casino compliance reps and ask about the exclusion process? Normally what we do now is if they're having issues doing it online, we will set up an appointment, have them to come in and actually assist them with that, yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions? No questions. Okay. I will uh, turn it over to my co counsel to, for our next witness. Good morning, Director Lloyd David Tepper, TEPPER, on behalf of the Office of Enforcement Counsel. Our next witness is Mark Hemack with the Bureau of Investigations and Enforcement. Good morning. Can you please state, spell your name for the record, please? Uh, yes, my name is Mark Hemack, H E M A K. And can you please introduce yourself? Uh, yes, I'm an investigative supervisor for the Bureau of Investigations and Enforcement in the Northeast Regional Office. And can you please describe your employment history with the board? I began my employment in October of 07 with the board as a casino enforcement agent. Uh, approximately a year, year and a half uh, after that, I was transferred to investigations, which shortly after that, I became a case agent for Mon Airy Casino for approximately 10 years and I was recently promoted to supervisor about two years ago. And what are your job duties as an investigative supervisor with the Bureau of Investigations and Enforcement? I primarily in, uh, supervise a squad of five investigators. Um, we cover uh, the Northeast region. Um, I primarily review reports. I um, review um, information to issue temporary credentials and we investigate keys, principals, gaming level twos, manufacturers, and gaming service providers. And as part of your uh, job duties as investigative supervisor, did you oversee the investigation to Mount Airy number one LLC's application for their renewal of their category two slot machine license? Yes. <clears throat> and um, what was the scope of your supervision of that? Um, the scope was from their previous licensure, which was August of 2016. And can you please give me some examples of the area that the Bureau of Investigations and Enforcement looks into during the renewal of a slot machine license? Sure. Um, for all the principals, um, we conduct face-to-face uh, -face interviews um, in terms of backgrounds, uh, 
order several databases, uh, speak to references, speak to local law enforcement. Um, in terms of the companies or affiliated companies, um, we run databases as well, check for any type of uh, litigation, um, judgments, liens. We speak with the Department of Revenue and the uh, Liquor Control Board. And at this time, has Mount Airy Number One LLC and all of its associated principals and entities provided BIE with the information to complete its investigation for the renewal of this slot machine license? In my opinion, yes. And although suitability investigations remain ongoing, at this time, is the renewal investigation into Mount Airy Number One LLC and all associated individuals and entities complete? In my opinion, yes. Thank you. We have nothing further for this witness. Any cross examination? No cross. Any questions from our board members? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That, conc that concludes our presentation. Okay, and we've moved to our um, exhibits. I have two public comment, um, written public comment that were received by the uh, board clerk for this hearing. I think they're very similar. Um, they've been provided to both parties, and um, if there are no objections, I'll enter those into the record. The ones I emailed yesterday, the written comments. Yeah, no the objection. Yeah. Okay. So those will be posted. I think actually they were posted yesterday on our, we on our website. So we'll enter those in the record as hearing exhibit number one. Reporter, are you okay, Donna? Okay. So we will now begin with the public comment portion of the hearing. I'm going to kick Attorney Tepper out of, of that chair. Uh, so when your name is called, <coughs> if you can come forward to this uh, end chair of the microphone uh, to provide your comments. And if you could each uh, begin your remarks by stating and spelling your name for the record. And... Um, if you're here on behalf of a community group or an entity, if you can tell us who you're on, here on behalf of. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you've registered to speak today or um, you are part of Mount Airy's um, program as well, um, if you would stand now to be sworn, um, stand and raise your right hand. I have Christopher Barrett, Sarah Marinsky, C, uh, William Colavito, Rada Brigala, and I'm sorry about the pronunciations, TJ Price, um, Gil Coronado, and Terry Martin. Director? Yes. And I'm sorry, the Honorable uh, Mario Scavello. Uh, Mr. Colavito is unavailable today. He was sick. Okay. I'm going to request the indulgence of the board, and if OEC has no objections to submit his written comment. Okay, we'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. So if you could raise your right hand to be sworn. Can you tell me swear or come to testimony about the district group or the member of the group? Thank you. Okay, and we'll start with the Honorable Mario Scavello, who has been patiently waiting since about 9 o'clock this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I have to tell you, just sitting here and, and listening to the testimony, how impressed I am with the, the professionalism of, of this board and the professionalism of the people that uh, oversee the uh, casino and, and also the professionalism of the people that um, work in, at the casino as well. I know there's two members here that I served in the House that knows that I was not a supporter of gaming initially. And, and, and the reason being, uh, I know, I know. So for the first time, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm testifying at, at this hearing because I just felt that people need to know the value of this casino in this community. The chair mentioned earlier uh, in regard to uh, uh, scholarships and things like that. The um, North, Northampton Community College is a state-of-the-art uh, building where it's, it has solar, geothermal, um, uh, windmill. It has it all there, and uh, it's one of the first green, and it got an award for, 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 the, for what's happened there. Uh, $2.2 a year goes to pay off that building from Mount Airy. 
And what it's done in the community for people that can't afford, um, you know, a, a four-year college somewhere else. So what they do is they go to the community college and take all their electives. And they save a tremendous amount of money. And many of them work part-time, maybe some probably at, even at the casino sometimes. So to make a long story short, 93 credits transferred to the University of Pittsburgh. They took every credit. And, that, and you, it, it happens all the time. And folks, and I, when I meet with students at the high schools, I always tell them, go to the community college. Get all your electives out of the way. You can pay for it as you're taking those courses. And it's just amazing what it's done for, for, the, for this community. Now, my vision is when that ends, when they pay that off f to, to build, and I'm, go I'm not going to be in office, but I'm, you know I'm going to lobby these guys to do this for a technical school, a full technical school, because not everybody should be pushed off to college. And we have something today, but it really doesn't do the job. And so that's going to be the next thing. So if those dollars in the future can do that, I think that uh, it will really help this community even more. Not just this community, but people from, from in, in the area here. So this is, you know, out in the bordering areas because that's what, what, we, what this, commu this casino helps. All, every county around us gets economic development monies. Um, so I wonder if, let's say, for example, the casino was in here, Paradise Township local tax, and I'm sure you're going to hear from one of the supervisors, would be at least four mills higher in property taxes. On, and on the top of the whole share, Paradise Township shares approximately half a million dollars in their property taxes with the, with the county. With, with the, county. Um, the school district receives around two million a year in school property taxes, two million a year. And, and shares 400000 with the township in earned income tax. Pocono Mountain School District has not raised taxes in 10 years. Seven of those years they reduced millage, and the other three they did not raise taxes. This casino has a tremendous amount of, you know, just, and you know, you always hear, I always complain about property taxes. This is one school district that has been reducing taxes because of the Mount Airy. And they employ about 850, and when you look at that, there's a $52 head tax for every employee, so the township gets another $45,000. I know, and I, you know, I'm going to speak about economic development. The local share account, I, I talked about the 2.2, the Northampton Community College, but also provides the low cost education, which I spoke about. A personal story of a young lady that's my um, chief of staff. She worked for me part time, and she did exactly what I was talking about. She stayed there three and a half years, paying as she went and then transferred to ESU for a year and graduated with a diploma at ESU and debt-free when she walked out. So it can be done. And, 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 and those are, the, to me, those are the, the good things that would probably not have happened, if, would, definitely wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the, for the casino. Another huge economic development piece comes back to Monroe County. Now, this is trickle-down economics. Everybody that visits this casino is shopping in our stores, buying gas at our gas station, going to the, uh, to the uh, big, we have one of the biggest, um, uh, one of the busiest uh, um, outlet stores here in Tannersville that, you know, they, they tend to turn every one of those parking spaces seven times a day when the average is seven times a day. So, and many of them on the way up or on the way back, especially if they won, they're spending money here. <laughs> Um, it's also, you know, another thing we talk about regionally, Mount Airy funds a good por a portion of the medical college, the regional medical college. So a lot of our future doctors from these communities uh, have that opportunity to go to medical college over in, uh, in Scranton. Mount Airy also brings visitors, uh, and I mentioned that as well, but uh, there seems to be a feeling, and I think it's important that people know that, that Mount Airy got grants to build that building. They got no state dollars at all. There was no grants at all. If anything, they've helped 
build the infrastructure because those dollars, the LSA grants, we use them to expand water, expand sewer. Natural gas is now down that whole 611 quarter because of the LSA dollars. And so we're so fortunate in, it, to have that as a pos, uh, as a as an advantage for us that it, it's nowhere else. So, and, and if they weren't there, none of that would happen. And one of the photos, they showed you the early photos of Mount Airy. What I described to you, Ms. Madam Chair, prior, if you came by there in 20, 2002 when I was elected uh, to the st state rep, that road was horrible. The road was horrible. And the buildings, the old buildings that were there were boarded up broken glass. It just looked awful. And this, and we're trying to build here in this community tourism. And so what, what, they, what that property looks like today, you're talking about a complete 360 and what it's created here for this area, the job opportunities you heard from some of the, some of the workers there. And I can tell you, I hear quite, quite a compliments from the workers as well. And if it were not for the casino, what would they be doing? You know, the, uh, tourism, our number one industry, you're going to hear later from the tourism uh, gentleman, but for, for, for me, um, I made a, they made a believer out of me, and uh, I, I, thank, I thank you, and I'm supporting, please, 100% support their application. I believe it, uh, they've done a phenomenal job and will continue to do so as well. Thank you. Okay. No questions? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Mark would have given me one. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. And we will now turn to our community group speakers, um, Christopher Barrett. And I'm not sure if I said this in my comments, but if you could keep your comments to about five minutes. Thank you. Not that the uh, Honorable Scavello went over five minutes, but I, <laughs> no, you <he> didn't. <laughs> Good morning, Madam Chairman and Director and members of the board. I'm, I'm thrilled to be actually be here today to make a few comments on behalf of Mount Airy. And just before, I have some prepared comments that are very brief and short. Um, but just a little background on tourism because uh, Senator Scavello brought it up. Just to give you an idea, the Pocono Mounds is a four-county area, Carbon, Monroe, Wayne, and Pike, 2,400 square miles. It's fairly large. Monroe County comp comprises 71% of tourism attendance to the full Pocono Mountains. And I want to turn the clock back a little bit to the 1980s or 1990s. I was at Hershey Entertainment and Resorts at the time in, in general management. And what was happening in the Poconos was incredibly unfortunate. It was in, in decline. It was in very steep decline from a tourism perspective. But there were people who didn't want this area to decline and really believed in it. And one of the folks really sitting here in the room that really got us back to where we are right now. And there were a couple of companies that said, you know, we're not going to give up on the Poconos. We think it's got a great legacy. We think it's got a great future. So um, just to get to my prepared comments, it'll give it just a little bit more context to that. I I'm really thrilled that I was asked to do this this morning on behalf of Mountie for two reasons. The first is the industry owes the De Naples family a great deal for resurrecting the Pocono Legacy brand, which helped to establish our destination at a critical time because we were definitely in decline. We're in a period of decline economically, and they believe that the Poconos was still viable. They invested, and you saw some of the numbers, hundreds of millions of dollars, and continue to invest, as you saw, in our future by rebuilding Mount Airy. So Mount Airy was a legacy brand, which means I grew up in Hazleton, which is not too far from here, and I remember hearing the commercials on WPIX. Todd can probably sing them. Um, <laughs> no, we won't ask that. <laughs> so... You know, I thought, wow, what is this at Mount Airy? It's, it's a great, magical place. You know, and I was so young at the time, I never got to see it. But when I visited here the first time in 2017 and started my career here with the Poconos, it is that type of property for gaming property is not typical. There aren't many four star, or, or, excuse me, four diamond, and, four diamond and five diamond gaming properties in the United States. I mean, this is one of the crown jewels of the Pocono Mountains. I, I really can't say it any more succinctly than that. And that takes hundreds of millions of dollars investment, yes, but it takes the people capital. And the people capital is here and, and, and very well within that property. 
And, you know, the alternative would have been an empty building, as Senator Cavallo said, and a lost legacy. Instead, we are left with a four-diamond, five-diamond property that's truly one of the crown jewels of the Pocono Mountains. Also during the pandemic, Mount Airy was very quietly supporting their team members in any way that they could. And they are very quiet about that, but they provided food, medical benefits, other support, as you saw, when their operation was shuttered and and losing millions. I mean, the Pocono Mountains were shuttered. If you'd have said to me, oh, in a month from now, we're going to idle 35,000 people, I wouldn't have believed it. But folks like the, the Naples said, look, this is our family. We, we can't do this. And there were other operations that did it as well, but they absolutely did it. Because Manary treats employees like family, I think you heard that, and they have current concern for their overall welfare. In addition, they provided perishable foods to the homeless community. I'm also chair of the uh, Pocono Mountains United Way. And a lot of the operations came to us and said, we have perishable items. We want to, uh, we don't want them to spoil. Can we use them within the community? And Mount Airy was one of those folks. Their foundation is also very active in our community, again, very quietly giving to those in need. And Senator Scavello talked a little bit about the LSA dollars that are within our communities because of this property. So I think you all know very well what that has really done locally for us to have those dollars invested in our community. And I'm actually an instructor at East Strasburg University, and I have been an instructor at, at NCC, and I've seen it very directly how that's affected students. In fact, I had one of my students, we were putting together a very special internship program, which was related to data analytics, which now today is a really big field, or gaining to be a very big field. The first property I thought about was Mount Airy, and I called them, and I said, hey, I have this idea. They said, we'll take every student you can give us. So we always know as an industry that we can count on them, and they're very concerned about you know building that next generation of leaders that will take the mantle of our industry. So I, our whole industry really wholeheartedly supports the re-upping of this license. I personally support it too because I think they're great people. So if there's any questions I can answer for you, I'm happy to answer them about our industry or about our interaction with Mount Airy, which has been awesome. No questions. Thank so you for thank the you. opportunity, ma'am. Next we have Sarah, Sarah Marincic. Yes. Ah, I think I got it right that time. Uh, good morning. Um, my name is Sarah Marencic. It's S A R A H M A R E N C I C. Uh, I work for BRP Entertainment. We are um, a very small uh, certified women owned business located in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Um, to kind of sum up what we do, we source entertainment to fit our clients' needs and then we kind of walk them through the booking process from start to finish. Uh, I have worked at BRP for 10 years. I started in 2012, and Mount Airy has been a client of ours since 2011. <coughs> so over the years, we've worked with Mount Airy to book um, a wide variety of entertainment in this area. We have done everything from small local acts, we've booked tribute bands, uh, and then we also have done many national level bands, uh, comedian celebrities, like Cool and the Gang, <laughs> Tracy Morgan, <laughs> War, Daughtry's coming up. Um, so I've worked very closely with Mount Airy. I do all of their contracts and I work on a day of logistics for all of their events. And one thing that we also do as a company is we provide somebody on site day of event um, just to make sure everything runs smoothly. And so for probably the first five or six years that I worked for BRP, um, I was sort of the designated Mount Airy person. <laughs> uh, so I covered almost every one of their shows. Um, so I was at Mount Airy at least one weekend a month, probably two or three weekends, um, which was great because I got to know a lot of their staff. Um, and, you know, I really had the opportunity to build relationships with people and kind of see the behind the scenes of all the people who make the event successful, um, the marketing team, the food and beverage staff, security. Um, so um, I always enjoyed doing Mount Airy events just because I knew I had a reliable team to work with. Um, so overall, uh, Mount Airy has been one of our best clients. Um, we are proud to be there 
entertainment partner. Um, and we feel fortunate that they have trusted us for so many years to provide entertainment for them. And we look forward to hopefully having um, a successful relationship for many more years to come. Thank, Thank you. you. And you might want to see if you can sign Mr. Greenberg onto a contract <laughs> for <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, William Colavito. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, we have a, a question from our, our chair. How big is BRP uh, employees? Uh, we have six employees. Have you, grown, have you grown since you've developed this relationship with Mount Airy? Uh, when I started, we had three employees. Now we have six. <laughs> but I would say that they have definitely helped our business grow. They were one of our first casino clients. Um, and since you know we kind of had that experience working with them, we have expanded to work. Now we work with maybe ten different casino properties. So, excellent, yeah. excellent. excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. That's okay. My my fault of not asking. <laughs> now we'll hear from uh, Mr. Colavito. Oh, he's the one. Okay, I thought it was Coronado. I'm sorry. Okay, wrong. Cross out. Okay, so moving on to uh, Rada Brigilia. Okay, I know the wow. <laughs> Hello, uh, Rita Briglia, R E D A B R I G L I A, uh, Paradise Township Supervisor. And Senator Scavella did go over a couple of my notes that I had, so we won't have to go over those. But since 2017, Paradise Township has received $7,630,866 from the casino. This has allowed us not to increase taxes at all in the last 10 years. We've actually reduced our taxes by two mills about six years ago. The county and township taxes go out at the same time, and the county had increased their taxes at 2% at the same time. So nobody realized that they actually had a decrease from Paradise Township. We do have, we are the fourth lowest in taxes in Monroe County. Uh, the money from Mount Airy has allowed us to hire additional employees. Um, we do have over a thousand acres of open space property that we have put trails in, so we have been able to hire employees to take care of the trails, maintain the trails, put the trails in. Um, it also has allowed us to buy new road equipment, uh, dump trucks, et cetera, and so forth. Anybody in Monroe County will tell you that Paradise Township roads are the best in the county, which does include Woodland Road, where Mount Area is located. Uh, we've replaced many of our bridges. As you know, that's a problem throughout the whole country, is old bridges that were falling apart. So we have been able to replace five of our bridges with the money from Mount Erie. Um, and a couple of the things when Mount Erie was going in, people were concerned about traffic problems, crime. You've got the crime report. Uh, we have not had traffic problems. And that's really, so if there was any questions. Any questions? No questions. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, TJ Price. Good morning. My name is TJ Price, TJ, P-R-I-C-E. I am a local resident of Monroe County for many, many years and an independent event planner. I um, <clears throat> have over 30 years of experience during corporate events and weddings and fundraisers. One specific event that I represent is the Pocono Mountains Community Fundraiser. And over the last 13 years, um, Mount Airy has supported this event as well as many other organizations, either through donations or sponsorships or hosting the event. The Pocono Mountains Community Fundraiser exists uh, to provide a safety net of support for nonprofit organizations here in Monroe County. It started in 2004, originally sponsored and spearheaded by Santa Fe. The event has grown to include other uh, presenting sponsors, such as uh, Lehigh Valley Health Network, Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield, Eyewitness News, Almond Charities, and also Mount Airy Casino Resort. 
these presenting sponsors cover 100% of the expenses, therefore all of the monies raised go directly to the nonprofit organizations. Some of those organizations include Family Promise, Women's Resources, Second Harvest, the Salvation Army, <clears throat> Pocono Services for Families and Children, Meals on Wheels, and the list goes on. It's about 40 different organizations that we've helped over the last eight, 18 years. Mount Airy has hosted the event since 2019 and stepped up during the challenges of COVID with two virtual events in 2020 and 2021. We raised $100,000 in spite of COVID. The Mount Airy management and staff <coughs> have a can-do attitude which help us raise those, those dollars. And cum cumulatively for the community fundraiser, we have raised $2.8 million over the 18 year period. Uh, for this event, uh, we're changing things up and we're doing a food fest fundraiser right here at Mount Airy at their concert pavilion. And Cool and the gang will not be there. <laughs> so the event takes place on September 14th. Uh, we're really thrilled to be back in person and, and host a live event. People can interact with each other and have fun uh, at this event. We've invited uh, area restaurants um, with delicious samples of their food and desserts. Um, and they're going to participate in the concert pavilion, so we'll have an outdoor feel to it, like a tent. I want to thank Mount Airy Resort and the Day Naples family for the continuous support of countless nonprofit organizations who work tirelessly to improve the lives of local people that are less fortunate than us. I hope you'll join us on September 14th for the Pocono Mountains Community Food Fest fundraiser on Wednesday, September 14th. Please feel free to ask me any questions and thank you for inviting me to speak. Thank you. Think we have any questions? Okay. Um, and my last community group speaker, Gil Coronado. Hey, good morning. Gil Coronado here. That's G I L C O R O N A D O. And I'm here to share with my ex about my experience on the community level for Mount Air Resort. Um, I do several events within the community here. And um, I, was, I had the fortunate opportunity to do an amazing Cinco de Mayo event. Um, as a member of the Latino community, when we did this event, it was unbelievable. We sold over 200 tickets for this event. And to be able to do an event that would raise our culture and our community and create a buzz, because there's not many places within the community here that can provide this ex the whole experience that Manary does, um, it generated quite the buzz for the event. For me, it was amazing because it raised, the organization was NIREP, the National Organization of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals, and I'm the event organizer for that event. It was a very exciting evening full of amazing food, dancing, and uh, desserts. I really feel that Mount Airy is a true ally to the Latin community because they support not only the larger scale events, but also the the smaller events. They provide services like rooms and whatever we may need on a lower community level. As part of the Latino community, I do feel valued and I know Mount Airy will be here should we need them. Mount Airy supports other, um, other organizations like the United Way, which I do serve on the board of. And um, that's, so that's about it, thank you. Any questions? Any questions? No questions. That was my last community group um, representative. Is there anyone here from a community group that thought they registered to speak and I did not call your name? No? Okay. Then we'll move on to the individuals. I have Terry Martin. Yes. Good. Morning. Uh, my name is Terry Martin, M A T R T I N. Um, I am underdog advocate. That is my fictitious name registration. I was born in McMichaels in Western Monroe County on a farm, and I was potty trained in an outhouse with bees. 
My father worked for Paul Ettinger Construction for 40 years. And in the 60s, he was a commuter because there wasn't any work here. Uh, I carried water, and in 1979, I still had a ringer washer. I was born to a man that wanted boys, and he got four girls. I had no self-esteem and high school education. I ended up at the Summit Resort working for Tony Farda in 1978 in the office. I then went to Caesars Brookdale and worked directly with Morris Wilkins. I was in the office. He was the inventor of the heart-shaped tub. Started out as an electrician. When I went there, I am rooted to this community. I'm going to leave this with you. From 1983, 1984, when gambling first came up in the Poconos, I corresponded with legislators and with the Pocono Mountain Vacation Bureau at that time because I was in favor of it. I felt that it was necessary. Uh, when I worked at that, that uh, Caesars Resort in the early 80s, the house counts would be zero sometimes. Sometimes they would be two. Sometimes they would be ten. And we'd have to send the guests to Paradise Stream to eat because it wasn't worth keeping a cook on. Morris Wilkins had faith in me and trusted me there. I was alone at night in that resort and whatever happened and decisions I had to make regarding people coming in or whatever, they had faith enough in me to let me make those decisions. The education that I got at that resort was priceless, absolutely priceless. I could not have paid for a college education that would have given me the uh, self-esteem the knowledge, the resourcefulness. I had to answer the phones for reservations at that time. Morris would call and say, what's doing? Well, most of the time, nothing was doing. My, one of my jobs was there was a little pad of reservations that people made, and they were called tentative reservations, but then people wouldn't send in their deposits. So I would take those dead tentatives and I'd call the people and say, hey, would you be interested in, you know, it's, it's great here, would you be interested in just leaving a deposit? And then I'd call Morris and when he said, what's doing? I would say, well, we resurrected 10 dead tentatives. And that was a big celebration because that is what I did. Um, and people came and enjoyed it. And I got to see a whole different culture other than the culture of being like a so-called worthless female. Um, we did the reservation charts in paper, um, and we did what we had to do. Um, I ended up uh, having an electrical contracting business as time went on. I was at the res in the resort industry for 11 years, and I worked as an auditor overnight and an office manager and I know how poor things were in the early 80s. And uh, we're going to move on to challenges because I know I don't have much time. But the challenges we have here now are we have to sharpen our pencils and make sure any income coming in from our gambling revenues get put to the right place. In regard to uh, property taxes, I raised that knowledge I got at those resorts allowed me to raise 10 children. They're all gainfully employed now. I homeschooled five of them. Um, we have uh, challenges with dead cell service, roads inadequate. Uh, we don't have FIOS, central water, sewer. Gentrification is uh, a big thing now because the rentals, you know, the people can't afford to, to stay because, uh, you know, their, their rents are doubling. So as a senior citizen, I've had to sign my house over to my son because I can't afford the property taxes anymore. But that's okay because I can keep living there. Um, I want you to know that the DiNapolis family is rooted and invested in this area. I don't know them personally. I've just seen through the years. And this is my personal experience. They are rooted. They are invested. Every exit down Route 80 you'll see the chains, Tractor Supply, Lowe's, Home Depot, wherever you go throughout the country, 
there will be chain resorts. There will be chains of all kinds of things. But in this case, it's an independent family business. And these independent people, I feel, deserve our support. I think that the people that run Mount Airy did their best, and they did their part. And now the people that are the fiduciaries and government officials here, the commissioners, state reps, senators, we have to do our, not we, but as a community, we have to do our part in making sure that any allocations go to help with property tax release, with, with allowing people that have lived here the whole lives to stay here. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, this family has done their part and more, and they're not homogenized, and the atmosphere is different. And as far as I know, what I'm seeing is other resorts are coming for grants. They're coming for tax abatements and all this, you know, whatever they can get. I haven't seen that with Mount Erie. So I am an activist. I am, you know, if it wasn't for that job and that time I spent in that 11 years, I would never have become the woman that I am now. And I am fierce. And I'm no longer that, you know, worthless female. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Having heard from um, Mark Kulik and Shante Vallejo, I don't have any other um, individual speakers. Is there anyone here who thought they registered? Raise your hand. OK, seeing none. Um, Mount Airy, do you have any closing remarks? First of all, I'd like to thank the board and the community members that showed up to support Mount Airy. As I started out in my opening statement, my goal was to show that Mount Airy is suitable and deserving of renewal and that it is a major economic driver and supporter in this community. I hope that after this presentation, the board concurs with me. And again, any information that you've requested will be provided. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Mr. Monaghan? Okay. The, rec the record will remain open until the board hears the matter at a later public board meeting. I'll prepare a summary report to the board of the events today, and that along with the full transcript and all the exhibits that um, have or will be ex um, sent to us will be included um, in the packet to the board before it hears the this at another board meeting. Um, I want to thank you all for coming today. I want to thank the township and um, Tina here at the township for her cooperation in helping us hold this hearing today. So the hearing now is adjourned. Thank you.